So there's a lot of shame, secrecy, and silence associated with menopause. In fact, probably about two, three years ago, this is the year 2024, we couldn't even say that word without whispering. So I wanna share with you that menopause and perimenopause are very exciting times for women. Number one, we're really starting to pay more attention to what's going on in our bodies. Number two, it's really a way to think about how I wanna reflect on the rest of my life. And so what we need to remember in perimenopause and menopause and midlife, because they all happen around the same time, is that our bodies that we had before in our 20s and 30s are not the bodies we have now. So our hormones are changing significantly, in fact, more than we did during puberty. So why would we approach our wellness in the same way that we did when we were 20 and 30, now that we're 40, 50, 60, 70 and beyond? We need to change the way we approach our wellness in a more wisdom-filled way, and that's what we do. My name is Adrienne Cotton. I am a wellness expert. Right now I'm located in Alexandria, Virginia. What do I do? I work with women in midlife from about the age of 40 to 45 all the way through the rest of your life, and I help you journey through midlife wellness, particularly perimenopause and menopause. I do it through five different strategies, and that is number one, getting your sleep, two, finding your stress resilience, number three, finding time on your calendar, four, exercise, and five, your relationship with food. How can you find me? You can find me at adriancotton.com or on Ad uh, Adrian M. Cotton on Instagram, and then you can also find me on LinkedIn, Adrian Cotton. I am really passionate in helping women understand that we have all been sold a big old lie, conventional wisdom. And I truly believe that the fitness and the diet industries, while possibly not intentionally, have sold women this idea that we have to work really hard at our fitness and diet like crazy and deprive ourselves of food when we need food. So another part of what I do is I help women define their relationship with their body and with exercise and with food. So finding a place for abundance when it comes to their food and not deprivation we talk through the science of how counting calories is not the only way to maintain your body weight. And really, I strength train women to help them feel strong and confident in their bodies for the rest of their lives. One of the first signs that women find in midlife, for lots of different reasons, and significantly perimenopause, is we lose sleep. Now, a lot of it can be from our childhood that really we didn't, we didn't learn that sleep is this important to us. We know that when we don't get our sleep, and I mean seven to seven and a half hours of uninterrupted sleep, when we don't get our sleep, we are not cleansing and detoxing our brain at night, and we are accumulating the, the protein in our brain that causes Alzheimer's. We know that. So I teach you how to sleep. I teach you some really simple tips, and then we dive deep into some of the things that are preventing our sleep like our stress, but I'm telling you the foundation of my program, and you will lose weight by sleeping, you will feel better in your body by sleeping, you will have better relationships with sleeping, and your perimenopause and menopause symptoms will significantly improve with sleep. So another spoke of my wellness wheel is stress resilience, and why I call it stress resilience is I find that a lot of us, women particularly, because I work with women only, is we have a lot of stress. We put a lot on our shoulders, we tend to be problem solvers, fixers, strivers, and this is all good because we haven't made it to where we are today if we hadn't have been like this. However, it puts a lot of stress on our bodies and on our menopause experience and directly is a cause for weight gain and a lot of other symptoms like killing our immunity system, increasing our blood sugar, making us, our insulin resistance is the key to your menopause experience. And I work with women on finding simple ways, not only throughout the day, but in the moment of stress, which will really significantly improve your relationship to your body, it will improve your sleep, you will lose weight, you'll have a better relationship with food. And this is because of stress resilience. Many women come into my program and they wonder, why are we talking about calendar? Why does my wellness wheel include calendar? And that is because we are halfway. 
We are what we call midlife, and midlife is a big, broad definition. We are redefining what that means, but we know this much. We're probably around halfway through, right? So if, if we're halfway through, how we spend our time is a direct reflection of who we are. So if I were to take a look at your calendar, we used to have paper calendars, but if I would look at your calendar on your computer or on your phone, would I see your values? So in our program, we help you define again your core values. Why are you here? And we take out calendars and we figure out how can we get a little bit more time for our wellness and for those priorities that we really want to spend our time on. And again, we want you to spend a little bit more time on you and your wellness. Okay. So the next book spoke on my wheel I call physical movement. I don't call it exercise because I believe a lot of women have a relationship with exercise that can be something that's more negative or pejorative or almost a struggle. So I work with women in understanding that a relationship with movement can be a walk around the block. It can be getting up, down, from the floor. There are lots of ways that we can move through the day and it doesn't have to every day be a sweaty 60 minute whatever class or session. Our measure of a good workout here is not based on how much sweat you've accumulated and how many calories you have burned because exercise is absolutely primal to our bodies, particularly in midlife. And I am very passionate about helping women understand that their bodies are the best powerful source they have for the rest of their lives and we get it really strong through strength training and through resistance training. All right, and the last spoke of my wheel, and actually the wheel that I put at the top of my triangle, the triangle is like so, and at the bottom is sleep, then we have stress, then we have calendar, then we have um, movement, and then I have food and your relationship with food. Because a lot of time women come and they wanna talk about the last two, food and exercise, because again, that's how women have been told and we believe, we've got this pattern of, uh, pattern of beliefs in our heads that if we just focus on our diet and our exercise, then that's all we need to do. And in midlife, it's different. And it's actually an opportunity to look at other strategies. So when it comes to food, we first talk through why we need food and what kinds of foods, but more importantly, how to eat. Like for example, we really should be seated and we should be chewing our food completely. Now it sounds maybe impossible and it sounds maybe silly, but it can do a really good job to help you burn metabolism, absorb your food and your nutrients, and we walk through different strategies of how to have a beautiful relationship with food, which you possibly have never had in the past. Okay, so there are four stages to perimenopause, something that a lot of women and men don't know. And that is because the, we don't really recognize the first one. Our cycle is essentially seemingly the same as it has always been, but things are happening under the sur surface. Our brain is incredibly brilliant. It's preparing itself for our inability to reproduce. So when we go through one, we're not most notable things are not there. The stress is gonna increase and your body's gonna start this change. In phase two, you might start having some heavier periods and other whole host of symptoms come along. And that's when likely vaginal dryness, which is a top symptom of perimenopause. And that can be, it can be feel itchy. Um, intercourse is very uncomfortable. You're probably in perimenopause. There's a third stage where even more symptoms come along. And the fourth stage is really when your, your period is very sporadic. It can be one month and then four month break and then a six month break. And it, unfortunately, it doesn't happen linearly. It happens based when, when you, the individual, your body is ready to start the process of menopause and have no more periods. This is the big issue that we find with women is that we don't really know what signs to look for. And often I say we are not living inside of our bodies. Most of us, and I can go through my days and not even think about how my body is behaving because I'm so busy, I'm on the clock, right? But the things that we can be looking for are, number one, is your anxiety a little higher? Your brain's not happy because your body's going through the most significant change that you will go through since, since puberty. Perimenopause is a big shift in our hormones and a change in our whole reproductive life is happening. So number one is, do you feel a little bit more anxiety? Number two, sleep. How's your sleep? Number three, I would say you've already entered it in stage two when your cycle is starting to change. 
If your start, cycle is starting to change significantly, you are in it. Number four, of course, hot flashes are 75% of women experience hot flashes. When I find that a woman is at that phase where she's interested in the holistic approach that I teach, but she's also thinking through, perhaps I should talk to some doctor about how I can feel better. I will refer out to a menopause specialist, and this is a medical doctor, typically an OBGYN, but it could be another type of, of, of professional in the medical industry, but they have a menopause specialist certification and education, and they can be found on nams.com, National Association of Menopause Specialists, and they are the, they are the professionals who can help guide you whether or not you're a candidate for hormone therapy or not yet, and that happens, and how, and there are so many different combinations of hormones, because we do know this much. Women need estrogen. So if you are a candidate, most likely your doctor will prescribe hormones, and then we come back and we talk through any fears or concerns you have, and then we go on the, on the road together of hormones, if in fact that is something you choose to do. How can you work with me? AdrianCotton.com is where you can find me or on LinkedIn or Instagram. So the programs that I offer are varied. I do corporate speeches. I also have corporate workshops that I conduct for whole teams of men and women and also teams of women only. You can find them again. I've got it made symbol on my website on how to catch me for that. If you are interested in working with me physically, then I offer virtual and in-person sessions here in Northern Virginia. So let me tell you a little bit about Concierge Small Group. I get very excited to talk about it because I have a group of women who I work with. And what we do is we meet once a week at the same time on the same day for one hour. And what do we do with that one hour? We pack in a lot. So the first half hour we spend on wellness issues like sleep, stress, calendar, exercise and food, and we also talk about issues like gratitude practices, self-compassion. So we spend half an hour there, I teach, they partner, they have homework, and then the other half, I train. So I train, strength train you either virtually or in person, and I do a hybrid if you come sometimes in person or you want, are you traveling, no problem, but I would love to work with women virtually anywhere across the United States.